Hello, you're highly welcome. I'd like you to listen to this background from where we start. This has to do a lot with deception and why I deem it fit and very important for us to look at this and also to put in some corrections is I've been talking about some experiences, out of body experiences, and I have not shied away from telling you that yes, some of them could be manipulated and the basic way to know who has been manipulated or if the devil is trying to manipulate you is to put side by side your experiences by the with the word of God. So in this video, I'm not going to waste too much time, but I have to start with this uh, experience that was had by um, Ike Nathan Uzoma, the former occult grandmaster now in Christ. And if you listen to this, watch this, and I will tell you why I had to start with this. Now, let us look at this story of this woman who allegedly, you know, met Jesus and has been speaking with a lot of dead relatives who are in heaven. And the issue is that in this video, she is said to have claimed that Jesus told her to eliminate her relatives, such as her children, in order to fulfill what uh, you know she has covenanted or she was covenanted before she came from heaven to this earth. Please don't miss any part of this video. Don't even miss a minute of this video. Let's just go on and do this now. <music> You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Before my encounter with the Lord, I want to say, when I was a celebrity, I used to meet a personality in the, in the psychic spheres, in the astral world, which people generally can call spiritual world. Spiritual world is variegated, so actually there are a lot of levels when you talk about the spiritual world. But I'm talking about the astral world, which is a segment of what can be called spiritual world in general terms. I met a lot of personalities, and there are a lot, I met a particular being who, who called himself Jesus. But instead of saying this Jesus Christ, he called himself Jesus Ajunitim. Now, this Jesus Ajunitim was the basis of my. This of, 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 of illusions and manipulations upon me because he made me to believe that he was the Jesus Christ uh, who died. And um, I believed him because I didn't know what to believe then. That I thought that, that, you see, because within the esoteric sphere, it is the facade that you should experience something that is beyond the mere hearing and belief systems. So, Seeing this being, I said, okay, this is Jesus. He told me that he was in the astral Koza. There's a prison in the astral world called Koza. So he was in the Koza's astral prison. And he told me that um, he was in prison because of his offenses which he committed on earth. In other words, he made me to believe that Jesus Christ committed a series of offenses while he was on earth. And that one of the great offenses he committed was to rebel against his master that was called Zadok. He also told me that this Zadok was the being that gave Jesus Christ power and that uh, when Jesus was on the cross, he was not lamenting for Zadok to come and help him. He, he explained that when Jesus Christ said, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? That he was actually calling on Zadok while he withdrew the esoteric powers. And that, and that Jesus had joined him, told us that, told me, and some other initiates at that level, that, uh, that he was uh, at the second what you call cosmic initiation. There are five supreme cosmic initiations. Cosmic initiation into the esoteric system is beyond initiation into a secret society. Like when you say order of astral and terrestrial hierarchy. Order of astral and terrestrial hierarchy is an interplanetary organization that deals with extraterrestrial intelligences that are within the framework of the forces of darkness. So before we move on, and, you know, like I, I said, you may not understand why I had to start with this clip that I played now, but it will make sense to you if you can follow me to somewhere where it will make sense where this and what you're going to hear from this woman would become almost the same thing. Then it will make sense to you when I begin to explain it. But then for, uh, you know, a better understanding into our journey, I'd like you to listen to this news uh, clip from uh, Sky, Sky News. Uh, Sky News is British. Let's listen to them. Doomsday mom Laurie Vallow jailed for life for murdering two of her children. 
A woman dubbed the Doomsday Mom has been jailed for life without the possibility of parole for the murders of two of her children and conspiring to kill her husband's ex-wife. Lori Vallow, 50, had become obsessed with a religious apocalypse, prosecutors in the U.S. said. The mother from Idaho believed her children had to be destroyed so they could go to heaven, her trial heard. She allegedly believed her son and daughter were zombies and that she was a goddess sent to usher in the biblical apocalypse. She was handed three life sentences, one for each of the charges, to be served one after the other. The disappearance of two of her children, seven-year-old Joshua J. J. Vallow, and his sister Tylee Ryan, aged 16, in September 2019 transfixed the nation and sparked a month's long search. 122. It was not until June 2020 that police found the mutilated remains of J.J. and Tylee at a property in rural Idaho that belonged to Vallow's fifth husband, Chad Daybell, who was awaiting trial on the same murder charges. After a lengthy trial, Vallow was convicted of their murders in May this year, along with conspiracy to murder her husband Daybell's ex-wife, Tammy. Image, Joshua J. G. Vallow and Tylee Ryan. Pick, Fremont County Sheriff's Office. Vallow appeared at Fremont County Courthouse in St. Anthony, Idaho, on Monday for sentencing. Before her sentencing, she addressed the court claiming that a near-death experience allowed her to communicate with the spirit world. She told the judge that she knew for a fact that her children and Tammy Daybell were happy in heaven. She said Tylee and JJ have communicated with her that they are happy after their deaths. Son of Doomsday Mom addresses court. Vallow also faces two other cases in Arizona, one on a charge of conspiring with her brother to kill her fourth husband, Charles Vallow, and one of conspiring to kill her niece's ex-husband. Charles Vallow was shot and killed in 2019, but her niece's ex survived an attempt later that year. 80 Monday's sentencing hearing, Judge Stephen W. Boyce heard testimony from several representatives of the victims, including Vallow's only surviving son, Colby Ryan. In a statement read by a lawyer, Mr. Ryan said, my siblings and father deserve so much more than this. I want them to be remembered for who they were, not just a spectacle. I've lost the opportunity to share life with the people I love the most. Image of Vallow faces two other cases in Arizona. Pick, AP, Laurie Vallow and Chad Dable married in November 2019, about two weeks after his previous wife Tammy was killed. While it was initially thought that Tammy had died of natural causes, an autopsy later revealed she had been asphyxiated. When the two children, J.J. and Tylee, were reported missing, Vallow and Daybell had told police that J.J. was in Arizona with a family friend and Tylee had died a year before and had been attending a university. J.J.'s body was wrapped in rubbish bags, his arms bound in front of him with duct tape. Tylee's remains were charred. First I will. Now, a, a bit of a further background uh, of the woman and... Now, I think it should be, be it should begin to make some kind of sense to you now, the kind of a person that she was. She had divorced four husbands and she is actually, she was in the, on the fifth, is it was or is, the fifth marriage now. And for such a person who, who has such claim, which you will hear here, that it has to do with everything. She brought Jesus into everything that she, you know, she spoke even in the courts before she was sentenced. You know, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And that was what made me afraid because some folks out there might misinterpret Jesus, might misinterpret, you know, the, the Christian faith. And it is possible for the young, you know, at heart in the faith to think that, oh, it's is this the Jesus that people are talking about? No, that this is not Jesus. She is not talking about Jesus. Now, this will bring us back to the experience of um, Professor Ike Nathan Ozoma in the experience that he had. But before then, let's listen to this gentleman here who is having, um, you know, somehow uh, uh, a lot of uh, background explanation about the woman in question and what actually transpired. I'd like you to pay attention. Offer a brief background on the case against Lori Vallow. Move to a summary of her statement made at sentencing, then offer my analysis. Lori Vallow was born in 1973 in California. By 2005, Lori had been married and divorced three times. She had a son named Colby with her second husband in 1996 and a daughter named Hai Lee with her third husband in 2002. In 2006, Lori married for a fourth time. Her husband was named Charles Vallow. In 2013, the couple adopted J.J. Vallow, the grandnephew of Charles. At this point, Lori was caring for two children, 
Tai Li, and JJ. Sometime around 2015, Lori became obsessed with a man named Chad Daybell. He self-published books about the apocalypse, which reflected his extreme interpretation of his beliefs as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Now, this, the mentioning of this church should begin to give you an alternative mindset about this woman's background and which Jesus that actually spoke to her, the church of um, uh, Jesus Christ of the later day saints. The mentioning of this church should give you a better background and a better understanding of who the woman actually is and the persons that she was involved with and who, I guess, you know, has been appearing to her that claims to be Jesus. Or LDS. Lori and Chad met in person in 2018. They developed a strong connection. Chad told Lori that they had been married during previous lifetimes and claimed that he had the ability to determine if people were on the side of Jesus or Satan. Now, this is where the assignment was given, and you would understand that perfectly well. Now, she was uh, she was involved with a man who has been given the assignment to, to determine who was on the side of Jesus and those that were not on, on the side of Jesus, and they attacked them dark and, you know, light, light and darkness. And so when she said something in the letter video where she would be given opportunity in the court to speak her last word before, you know, sentencing, it will make sense to you as I begin to end, them, end the video there. He labeled them light and dark, respectively. It appeared as though Chad inspired several delusions in Lori. This was followed by many strange occurrences in 2019, like people no longer remaining alive. For example, in July of 2019, Charles Vallow was killed in Arizona by Lori's brother, Alex Cox. In September of 2019, Lori moved with her children and her brother to Idaho, where Chad Daybell lived. Ty Lee and JJ went missing not long after this. Their remains were discovered in 2020 behind Chad's home. In October 2019, the month after Lori moved to Idaho, Chad's wife, Tammy Daybell, was found dead. Lori and Chad were married in Hawaii in November, and Lori's brother, Alex, died of natural causes in December of 2019. Of the five people connected to Lori Vallow, who died between July and December of 2019, four are thought to have been murdered. Lori and Chad were charged in Idaho with various offenses connected to the deaths of Tammy, Ty Lee, and JJ, including first-degree murder and conspiracy. Lori was also charged with one count in Arizona of conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. Lori Vallow went to trial in Idaho and on May 12, 2023, was found guilty of all charges. On July 31, 2023, Lori was sentenced to three consecutive terms of life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now moving to the summary of Lori's statement at sentencing. Prior to being sentenced to life in prison, Lori read a bizarre, insensitive, and grandiose statement, which was just over 1,700 words. I will summarize it here. Most of this is paraphrased. Okay, so before we go get into that video and where I will do the summary, I'd like you also to listen to this news outlet here. We have a shocking scene from an Idaho courtroom at the sentencing of Lori Vallow Daybell, the mother convicted of killing her children, Tylee Ryan and Joshua J.J. Vallow. She was ordered yesterday to spend the rest of her life in prison without the possibility of parole. Before that, Vallow Daybell addressed the court with the disturbing claims, including that she was in communication with her victims in the afterlife. She was convicted in May of killing 16-year-old Ty Lee and 7-year-old JJ and conspiring to kill Tammy J. Bell, her husband's first wife. Jonathan Vigliotti is at the Women's Detention Center in Rexburg, Idaho. Jonathan, good morning. And good morning to you, Nate. This is where Lori Vallow Daybell is staying before she's transferred to a prison where she will spend the rest of her life. Yesterday was the first day in more than three years we heard from her, and it was disturbing and bizarre. A judge telling her that she was living a life, what he called, of a religious rabbit hole. Jesus Christ knows that no one was murdered in this case. In the final moments before her sentencing, Lori Vallow Daybell denied responsibility for the murders of Tylee Ryan, J.J. Vallow, and Tammy Daybell. Accidental deaths happen. Suicides happen. Fatal side effects from medications happen. The 50-year-old claimed to have gained access to the spirit world after a near-death experience while giving birth. I know for a fact that my children are happy and busy in the spirit world. 
Because of my communications with my friend, Tammy Daybell, I know that she is also very happy. Judge Stephen Boyce handed down two consecutive life sentences for the murders of her two children and three consecutive life sentences for the conspiracy to commit murder of her children and Tammy Daybell. The most unimaginable type of murder is to have a mother murdering her own children, and that's exactly what you did. The judge heard impact statements from family members of all three victims. Valo Daybell's oldest son, Kobe Ryan, told the court in a statement that his mother's actions will affect the entire family for generations. Tylee will never have an opportunity to become a mother, wife, or have the career she was destined to have. JJ will never be able to grow and spread his light with this world. Tammy Daybell's sister read a statement on behalf of herself and their father. As I leave this courtroom today, I choose to never think of you again. This is the closest thing we can we can get to satisfaction. Outside the courtroom, JJ's grandparents said they're hoping for similar results in the remaining trials connected to the crimes. We've got to finish this. We cannot stop. And of all of the things Lori Vallow Daybell did say in court, not once did she say she was sorry. Meanwhile, her husband, Chad Daybell, faces identical charges. He will appear for trial early next year. He has pleaded not guilty, but if found guilty, he could be sentenced to death, Gail. Jonathan, a heartbreaking story on so many levels. I think the judge got it right when he said one of the worst crimes is a mother murdering her own children. It's just very tough to process. Thank you very much. All right, finally, we are, we are heading home, home stretch. I want you to listen to the whole um, statement created to the woman, created to the woman that went before she was um, sentenced. The things she said are bizarre, and I'm going to just look at them, you know, one after the other. I won't waste so much of your time. So let's just hop into it and listen to the mindless and cold-hearted statement that she made um, amidst the whole thing. Ms. Ballow, before I impose sentence, if you choose, you may address the court. This is known as the right of allocution, which permits you to make a statement on your own behalf or present any information in mitigation of the punishment for the crimes you've committed. And let me inquire at this time, do you wish to address this court? All right, very well, you may make your statement. I'd like to start by quoting John from the New Testament in the Bible. In John chapter 8, verse 7, Jesus says, He that is without sin among you, let him cast first cast a stone at her. Then in first, verse 15, Jesus says, Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true. Jesus knows me, and Jesus understands me. I mourn with all of you who mourn my children and Tammy. Jesus Christ knows the truth of what happened here. Jesus Christ knows that no one was murdered in this case. Accidental deaths happen. Suicides happen. Fatal side effects from medications happen. I have a different perspective in life because in 2002, when I was pregnant with Tylee, I died in the hospital while in labor with her. They tried to stop my labor. They put me on the table and they put something in my IV and I felt my spirit falling to the floor. I was standing near my pregnant body watching the doctors try to revive me, which took them a few minutes. In that time, my sister Stacy was standing to my left. I turned to hug her and was surprised that her spirit was as tangible as a physical body because I knew I was in spirit and she was in spirit. She said she needed to show me some things and we went to heaven. I later returned to my body. Because of this experience, I have access to heaven and the spirit world. Since then, I have had many communications from people now living in heaven, including my children, Tylee Ashland and Joshua Jackson, my sisters, Stacy and Lolly, my aunts and my uncles and my grandparents. I have had many communications with Jesus Christ, the savior of this world and our heavenly parents. I've had many angelic visitors have come and communicated with me and even manifested themselves to me. Because of these communications, I know for a fact that my children are happy and busy in the spirit world. Because of my communications with my friend, Tammy Daybell, 
I know that she is also very happy and extremely busy. I have always mourned the loss of my loved ones, and I have lost many in this mortal world. However, I know that more than most people, I know where they are now and what they're doing. I know how wonderful heaven is, and I'm homesick for it every single day. I know we all lived in heaven before we were born on earth, and we were all adult spirits in the heavenly realm. We chose to come to earth as mortals. Heaven is more wonderful than you can possibly imagine. I do not fear death, but I look forward to it. I do not. I did not want to return to my body when I was out of it. Even though my son Colby, who I adored more than anything, was only six years old at the time, and I was about to give birth to this new baby girl that I wanted so badly. I was a young mother, and you would think I wouldn't want to leave my children, but as I stood in heaven, I did not want to go back. I thought they would be fine without me because I was peaceful, and I was happy, and I was home. But then I was told by Jesus that I needed to go back and complete things that I had covenanted or promised to do before I was born. This caused me a lot of distress because I knew heaven was my real home and I only wanted to be there. I was free from pain, emotional and physical. But then I was shown how I would help my children and others in the future. So ultimately, I did agree to go back to my body. Kylie has visited me. She is happy and very busy. Tylee is free now from all the pains of her life. Tylee suffered horrible physical pain her whole life. I sat with Tylee in the hospital year after year after year while she screamed in pain when the morphine wasn't even enough to take away the pain of her pancreatitis. I sat there while she cried and I held back her hair while she threw up. And I am the only person on this earth who knows how much Tylee suffered in her life. She had pain every single day. She never felt good. Her body did not work right. And I don't know if that was from complications from me dying while she was being born or something else, but she had a very difficult life. She was sexually abused by her own biological father since she was three years old. And she was forced by family court to go visit him for 10 years against her will. I fought for her. In court, I protected her. I tried to protect her with my whole life. I tried to protect her. I worried about her every single day. Tylee had to get her GED because she couldn't go to school every day because she never felt good. She felt sick. Nobody knows this because Tylee, like myself, tries to put on a good front, tries to be a happy person, tries to have hope in life, tries to know that she's here for a purpose and that she has an eternal purpose to be on this earth. But I never stopped worrying about her. One of the times that Tylee came to me as a spirit after she died, she said, she commanded me and she said to me, stop worrying, mom. We are fine. She knows how I worry and how I miss her. The first time JJ visited me after he passed away, he put his arm around me and he said to me, you didn't do anything wrong, mom. I love you. And I know you loved me every minute of my life. JJ, JJ, Joshua Jackson, was an adult spirit. And he was very, very tall when he put his arm around me. He is busy. He is engaged. He has jobs that he does there. And he is happy where he is. His life was short, but JJ's life was meaningful. JJ was a wonderful person and touched the lives of everyone. And I adored him every minute of his life. My eternal friend, Tammy Daybell, has visited me on several occasions. She came to bring me peace and comfort. And I know that she is extremely busy helping her family, especially her children and grandchildren. And I have a great love for Tammy. My beautiful children, Tylee Ashlyn and Joshua Jackson, Rest safely this day in the arms of Jesus. <laughs> My wonderful friend, Tammy Daybell, rest safely this day in the arms of Jesus. And I look forward to the day when we are all reunited and I too will rest with them in the arms of my Jesus. 
finally we are at the end of the video but i just want to react to a few things if you're listening to her you will know that this is the kind of a person that is a, a fanatic to what she believed or what she has been made to believe by some evil spirits uh, that was an opportunity for her to you know to be remorseful and to say hey, i'm sorry to those of you that have been affected by my actions i was misled by some strange forces or it was out of my my selfish desires and all that that made me to go into this i didn't know what i was in at the time but now i think with time uh during the investigation and whatever i've been convinced that my actions were bad but you saw her starting with a point where Jesus said, if any of you had no sin, let the person cast the first stone. Now, that was a spirit of trying to justify herself and her action. And for those that may say, but that there is no way these things came up that she ever said. No, she mentioned those in her statements inadvertently, covertly. Now, when she said that, you know, people judge carnally, but Jesus judged Jesus' spiritual judgment. Even though that he judges no one, but whenever he judges, his you know judgment is righteous. I like to you know look at the other point where she said JJ told her she didn't do anything wrong. Now that is an admission of the fact that yeah, I did what I had to do. I did what the spirit bade me do. Now that brings us to the point where I said, remember the first video that that man Ike Netanyahu said he was influenced by a spirit that he met in the astral lane. Or astral realm where he was told that by that spirit that he happens to be jesus now but the difference here now is that the person he met the being he met obviously he was not knowing the bible because we have jesus christ and this person said this being told him that he was jesus but jesus had been ashamed now and he was able to convince him that that you know the death of jesus was as a result of punishment that jesus was crucified on the cross was because of punishment and jesus had been kept in a prison now, this was a high tower, high powered deception, deception on the very high order. And he was deceived. And that was why from that moment in time, he believed he was doing the right thing. And he now swore that Christians, those who believe in Jesus, were making mistakes. And so he was mandated to see how he could correct it. Now, he said, she said her son, you know, told her that she didn't do anything wrong, that they are happy. And you see, she talked about Tylee being in, in great pain all through the days and nobody knew how much pain that the girl, you know, go through. But now it went through. But now she lives happily. And so obviously she was also convinced by the spirit to take the girl's life. But then look at the kind of death that, you know, they died. The two of them died the same you know, in the same place. But she claimed that the daughter has you know, gone to a different location. But they were both found in the same place and the son was, was you know, found in a garbage bag, tied, and the body charred. The different perspective she had about life after that encounter. Now, this brings us to comparing these experiences with the word of God. I've always said any revelation you received that is not in relation, in agreement with the word of God, must be thrown outside the door. In fact, it must be buried. It must be burned. It must be eliminated completely from your conscience and you need to seek the face of God so that the devil will not make you another lolly. Now, so it, she, she, her perspective in life changed and she was told, yeah, you know, she, she began to have angelic communication and you heard where she talked about heavenly parents. Now, these are strange things. I believe that angels can visit a child of God, but it, 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 you know, when that becomes out of order and note that the person that took her to heaven in the first place was her own sister who I believe died before, you know, before she had her experience. Now this sister came, she was the one that took her to heaven and uh, the things she was covenanted to do, Jesus told her to go back because there were things she was covenanted to do. And when she became reluctant, she was reminded of how or she was shown how to help her children and her friends in the future. And that was the help that she gave to Tylee, according to her, who was in pain prior to the point of death. And now she is, you know, relieved of the pain. Tylee is busy now doing some things, you know, getting engaged in the spirit realm. And so for her, the, the spirit realm, the realm of the heavenlies is also as busy and as active, you know, with distractions the way we have it here on earth. Only that the difference is that there is peace there, there is happiness there, there is joy there. I'd like you to understand that the devil is the one who has shown this woman this thing. So 
that brings us to the, the you know the point where we need to be very careful the experience we have we, we have and or the experience that people tell you they have your pastor coming to tell you the lord spoke to them when the lord speaks to a man and it is not in agreement with the word of god please you need to be very careful because the devil actually is speaking and when you also look at the foundation of the woman i intentionally allowed the foundation to be laid one woman had married five five men five men five men in different in different you know places and in fact she had to eliminate the wife of the you know the recent husband in order to come in, into his life now so that cannot be a life of someone who is claiming all this relationship and familiarity with jesus jesus will never you know be be, be in the life of a person that is as horrible as this well anyway um i i just want to do this in order to discredit what she's claiming her claim that jesus sent her is entirely false and that is why i also say that you see the devil does everything he can in order to discredit christianity in order to tarnish the image of the body of christ now when some people who don't have knowledge hear this they will be like you see what we're talking about you know the christian already the church the christian body the body of christ is already under attack even even from within there is so much trouble you know around us and externally the devil is pumping things every day now this has nothing more to do with any other thing but so that few or many who can be convinced that christianity is a way of evil could begin to go you know after that way and you know the other time i was saying that the the, the occult has no pressure of trying to filter fake and original because and you don't even hear them saying that this is a fake occult this is the original occult but look at the the different kinds of denominations and church practices the church of jesus christ of the later day saints lds you know that formed the the parameter or the background for these strange experiences that this woman had it, maybe you do not know that that church is a cult it's not it's not of the lord now but they will pin it around the coming of jesus in order to make you believe that oh no that is not true but i want you to understand that jesus will come an incident happened recently in kenya where a pastor who also was preparing people for heaven made you know many people died and they buried them within and around the church and the other time in nigeria here somebody asked people to pay three hundred thousand naira so that he could take them to heaven so these are the things that the devil is doing in order to bring confusion but you need to know the word of god you need to read the bible and make the bible your friend and let the holy spirit interpret things to you if the spirit of god is speaking to you the revelation of the holy spirit will never contradict the bible the bible is the mind of god that we see we can see i do tell people that when the doctors want to know about your health and your body system they consult their encyclopedia now for us the bible is our own encyclopedia if you want to know about god if you want to know about god's address if you want to know the mind of god search for him in the bible you will find him let me know what you think about this in the comment section i'll be coming your way in the next video till then from me to you shalom